Oh boy, more inscription. It's almost like you like this game or something. I know, I like it a lot, actually. What's wrong with you? Yes. We're gonna do another modded run into inscription, but it's a complete overhaul. Basically, uh, when you play inscription, they hint at there being a, uh, a Grimora type run. So instead of fighting Leshy and all of his board and all of his games, mm -hmm. you also could go after Grimora and play all of Grimora's games. But it was just kind of like a joke thing. They didn't expand on it. It was just a thing you looked at for five minutes and then it was over. But somebody actually turned it into a fully fleshed out thing you could play. So mm. we're going to play a Grimora run. So go ahead and start a new Grimora run. And we're going to be playing Inscription, but with a lot of new mechanics, a lot of different mechanics. Ew, that sounds awful. I hate different. Ah, you'll enjoy it, I think. Uh... Go ahead and grab the first one. There's only one deck, essentially. And I would also turn on those two challenges so your cards are immune to electricity and you can't die. Because honestly, the Grimora mod has been very difficult so far. So I, I've been able to beat it, but only with I, when I've gotten myself uh, a couple of, you know, get out of jail free cards. Mm. Know, some nice ways. That's not good. What the? So this is a uh, new interface, of course. Instead of going through uh, the woods and everything. Yeah, so you're fighting in Grimora's lair now. What the hell is this? How do I... So, you can move... You you, you, you see the board right here. Bug! Oh, oh, no, all right. What the... The, you, the bug and the bug is gone now. Anyway... It was a literal bug. Yeah, your character is the uh, the black soldier on the chess board on the upper right. Oh, this guy. Yes, and you can click on adjacent spaces to move them. Okay. So, go ahead and confront the first boss, or... Well, no, I can't move. It's already, it's already game over, because I can only move in an L shape. You're and that space is blocked. You're not a knight. No, you move one space at a time. All right, well, I don't want to do this. Okay. You go ahead and walk around in here then, sure. Well, there ain't, ain't a whole lot in... In the catacombs. No, it's, uh, it's pretty empty. Go here. You can move one adjacent space at a time. And you can access this. You get a new card added to your deck. The Plague Doctor, the Summoner, or the Weechug. I want Plague Doctor. Okay. I don't know why. No, I know why, because it's Plague Doctor. It's Plague Doctor's kind of cool. All right. And I, again, you can scroll up before you fight that guy to see what your deck looks like. I got a Bone Heap, Grave Digger, Frank and Stein, and Zombie and a Plague and Doctor. And the Plague Doctor you, you just got. So this game mode plays differently compared to the game mode we've play, been playing in that you don't use blood to summon monsters. You only use bones. Okay. So there we are, against Grimora. You can see the cards coming down. You got a skeleton coming down. What's this? That's a hammer. At any point, you could use it to break any of your cards, get rid of it. If, if there's any card in your way, and you want to play something else, you can just use the hammer to break it. What's this? That ends your turn. All you can do is play the skeleton, because it requires zero bones. You have no bones right now. Skeleton. So, yeah, so we'll play it. Attack for one point. And then your skeleton attacks for one point. Why did my skeleton... Why did they just die? Skeletons are all fragile, so they break after they are after they attack. Why well, play a bone heap? Okay. Go ahead and play the bone heap. And then I sacrifice bone heap. You can't sacrifice. You can destroy it, though. You see that it, you do get bones for its death. Yeah, many bones. And I play Frank and Stein. You only have four bones right now. I play Frank and Stein. You can play the Grave Diggers. Fine, I play Grave Digger. Here's a Grave Digger. Here's a Grave Digger. There you go. They'll get you some more bones for and next I turn. End turn. Mm hmm. Got some Banshees coming down the line. What's Banshee do? The Banshee attacks for one and it's flying damage, so it flies over your cards. All right, well. Oh. Okay, so the skeleton, skeleton will die after after attacks. attacking he dies. He's okay, that's brutal. why he died. Yes. Um, I guess I end turn. Sure. Attack of one, it dies. You get three bones. Then it attacks for one, two, and you've got seven bones. So you can play both of them right now if you wanted to. All right. Frankenstein and the zombie. There you go. And I end turn. Destroy, destroy. You get a few more bones. What he was flying? How did I destroy him? Uh, because you can attack flying, but flying just means they fly over you, remember? Oh, that's right. They, they just go It's, it's over. not Magic the Gathering rules. Well, I am about to lose, I think. I think you're doing well, actually. You're attacking for three points right now. One, two, three. And then Grimora is attacking for two. Ooh. 
Lost your zombie, unfortunately. That's fine, he's a zombie. That's true. And a Plague Doctor. Yes, it only attacks for one point of damage, but it does stay on the board. But the skeleton also is useful here. There you go. We're gonna keep on attacking for three then. Oh, he's got Death Touch, that's why he's, okay. Yeah, he's expensive to play for six bones, but he does insta-kill anything. If you really wanted to, you could use your hammer to destroy your Gravedigger and attack the Banshee with the Plague Doctor. Oh, wait. Okay. Attack of three, and ooh, another Frankenstein coming down. Oof. So, yeah, you gotta draw a skeleton and play a card. There you go. So now he has Death Touch. Yeah, and I believe that's gonna do three points of damage, and that is going to end this round. One, two, three. There you go. You did five points of damage. Yay! All right, you survived that one, but there's still many more battles left ahead. So what's coming down? A shipwreck. A shipwreck. It does one point of damage, but does not destroy itself. So here's a, a little tip I would give you. Play a skeleton on the board, because he only has he's the only one you can play because at zero bones. So yeah, why play. wouldn't I just wait till next turn and then play him? Here's an idea. Play the skeleton. Okay. Hit use the hammer to destroy the skeleton. And now put the bone heap, who requires one bone, in his spot. So now the shipwreck will attack the bone heap, mm -hmm. it will absorb the attack, and it'll give you four bones, and then you'll okay. have four bones to play next turn. Alright, well I do that. Okay. Bonk. Stop stop wiggling. Who are you talking to? Me or this him? thing. It's wiggling. Oh, the little creepy little dial. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like it. You can use your skeleton to destroy that shipwreck. Mm -hmm. So you got four bone tokens left. You have a shipwreck coming down on the left and a Draugr. Draugr. It's frozen away. When it gets attacked, it releases the enemy inside. So generally try not to attack it. So that's a good place to put the Grave Digger, who does zero attack. Destroy the shipwreck. Shipwreck comes down, does a point of damage. Okay. Do that. We got a zombie. zombie. We, we will play zombie. To destroy the shipwreck. Not enough to play the Frankenstein right now, but that's fine. And turn. Get another skeleton. Might as well play the skeleton. You know, do, some, do a little bit of damage. Get a few more bone and tokens. And turn. Two more points of damage. And then we're going to lose the zombie to the shipwreck, unfortunately. Oof. But now we have enough bone tokens to summon Frankenstein and the Gravedigger, possibly. All right, so we'll play Frankenstein right here. Yep, and we got enough bones for Grave Gravedigger right there. Excellent. And turn. Destroy the shipwreck. A drowned soul coming down, huh? And there's the Plague Doctor. Um, wait, what are the, what are the little things lighting up? Oh, those energy, yeah, those, those come into play later. I'll explain them when we get to them. So he has a drowned soul coming down the line. He's got a death touch and he goes underwater. Great. Yeah, so he's gonna kill Frankenstein and you won't be able to destroy him, unfortunately. Great! Yeah. This is still salvageable, I would say, though. Is it? Yeah, keep on playing skeletons on the left side. Put the Plague Doctor on the right side. And you can do two damage every turn, and he can only do one. Or rather, she. Grimora can only do one damage each turn. Why didn't I put the Plague Doctor on this side so it went boink and just killed the... Oh, because it goes underwater. Because it goes underwater, so Plague Doctor wouldn't have killed it. it Plague Doctor would have gotten killed by it. Hey, we're That's done. Right. There we go. We were overthinking things a little bit. All right, so we can go grab I, an item or... I don't know what that is. Touch it. See what happens. What the... Who do you want to put in the electric chair? What does it do? Ooh, what does it do? Put the zombie in there. Okay, he seems pretty weak. Oh, uh, is it the same thing as the campfire? Maybe. How much electricity, how much juice do you want to put in that guy? Uh, let's just start with one, I guess. Okay. Hey, your creature could become more powerful. Oh, so it's a campfire. Yeah, essentially, you've given him a new ability. You could try to shock him some more. Push your luck or pull away. Yo, one more. One more small level of electricity. You pull the zombie back. Okay. Okay, so that's what that is. It's yeah. a campfire. Your zombie has new abilities now. You want to check it out after you get a new card? Yes. So the Grave Bard, the Giant, and the Dance Macabre. He is expensive as hell. 15 bones. Yes, I've tried to use the Giant before, but for 15 bones, it's very difficult. Yeah, we'll just do this guy. Grave Bard buffs adjacent cards. Okay. Where's my cards? Uh, what are his new abilities? So he's got Shield Latch. When he dies, you can choose somebody to give armor to. Nano armor, all right, and... When he dies, you can give somebody the Waterborne oh, Sigil. Okay, all right. The skeleton will attack the bone heap, it'll absorb the attack, give you a bunch of bones. 
And now you can play the skeleton and the grave digger or the grave bard. Grave bard would be a good choice here too, yes. Cause it'll buff the adjacent skeleton as well. Mm, we'll put him there. I think you've already won this. Three points of damage. Yeah, you got this next turn. There might be some stuff coming down the line, but we got a skeleton. Never mind. I was gonna suggest you just get a skeleton, but oh. I guess it doesn't matter too much. Play the grave well, digger. Well, put grave digger there, and then now he's gonna do one attack. Yeah, and the grave bar is gonna do one attack, so that's a total of five damage. You win. Easy. Yay. I would appreciate this mode more if I had more control over the kind of cards you could create. Compared to the uh, the base game, it's a little more luck based. Ooh, a revenant. So the revenant is really strong. It does an attack of three, but it also is brittle and will break. The chicken, chickenick. It's uh, basically whenever you destroy an enemy, their their deaths mean more bones for you. Mm. But as you can see, it has energy requirements. So you were asking earlier about the energy thing that was popping up. Mm -hmm. Basically, you get more energy every turn. So you cannot play this guy until turn six because he requires six energy. Oh, that's not good. So it's a strong card in that it does some damage. But it and, and it and it costs zero bones, but you can't play them early in the game. That's mm. his, that's the uh, only thing. So like the revenant. Okay, the revenant's not a bad choice. I would be wary of having too many brittle cards in your deck because it's difficult to uh, make a battle happen if all your cards are falling apart all the time. I'm guessing that's the final or the boss of this area. Yeah, that's the boss of this map. You can go to the electric chair one more time, but you got to go through that guy. Usual strat of taking the skeleton, destroy the skeleton. Use the bone heap to absorb the attack, and we get free bones. Bonk. Grab a basic skeleton. You can play the Revenant or the Grave Bard. Buffs adjacent cards. I would play the Revenant and the Skeleton this turn, because they'll do four damage in total, and then you can just play one more skeleton for that fifth point of damage next turn, and that'll be the end. Cool. One, two, three, four. Bump, 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 bump. Ah, uh, you got some cards coming, but it's a little too late, buddy. It's time for the killing blow. Go! Excellent, and now you have access to the electric chair. Uh, do the teeth not matter in this mode? No, overkill, uh, more getting extra teeth doesn't matter in this mode, sadly. So the electric chair one more time. Mm. You could try to buff Frankenstein. I might try to buff well, okay, so I can. here's what I'm thinking. I can either do Frankenstein to make him more worth five, or I can buff the Revenant and see if I get once for a win when he dies because he dies the moment he attacks. Yeah, if you can get somebody strong putting on these cards. Hmm. Let's buff Frankenstein. Buff Frankenstein, first attack. Okay, you got the uh, sigil protection when he dies. You know what, let's be stupid. Let's crank it up to max and see what, oh, nope, crank it up to two. All right, all right, you got another, uh, another sigil, didn't die, yes. So now... Now he's got Scavenger. Yeah, so when opposing cards die, they give you bones. Very nice. Oh, I could have just gone. Whichever way you want to attack. Attack from the left or attack from the right. Brr, I've been freezing for ages. Ah! <laughs> Phineas Gage, I didn't know you would come back. No, 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 that's my brother. Phineas Gage got a, a railroad spike stuck to his eye. I got an ice skull, it's different. Oh, okay. Let's turn up the heat for a good fight. You don't have to be that mean, man. I'm not being mean, I'm just being factual. All this ice is taking up too much space. <laughs> Skeletons. <laughs> all right, well, there's a skeleton. Mm -mm -mm. Gonna break smash it. it. All right, all right. I place bone heap. Yeah, he'll absorb some damage. And then I, and turn. Not much else you can do, so. Destroy the bone heap, do a point of damage to you. Yeah, you're down by one. Not a, not a good start for you, my friend. And I take a Skellyman, mm, okay. and I play... Where are you gonna play him? Skellyman. That's a good spot for him, I suppose. And then I break Skellyman. Oh, okay. I guess that works. And play Frankenstein. Ah, oh, alright. That's not a bad strategy, honestly. And then I in turn. Two points of damage? Okay. Keep in mind, this is a boss fight, and there's gonna be a wave after this. Just so you know. And I take another Skeleton. Okay, and I play skeleton. skeleton. Good. Yep, yep, alright. And then I in turn. Do a point of damage, destroy you, destroy the Draugr Frozen. There you go. All right, you're doing well, doing well. Hmm. You can play the zombie and the Gravedigger this turn. But unfortunately, I feel like Frankenstein is going... Well, actually, you're probably going to do enough damage here. It won't matter. I was going to say that Frankenstein is going to die, but you're probably going to do so much damage this turn that it probably won't matter. We will see. An attack of three ends this round. Poof. 
second wave. I'm still not feeling warmer! Uh, that sounds like a personal problem, buddy. Well, I'm gonna make it your problem. Your strikes are only making me colder! It's time for your cards to freeze! Chill to the bone! Ah, your cards are frozen and can't attack anymore! Ha 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 ha! They have an attack of zero, they're all frozen away! Rude! You can't do anything because you got no bones! I guess you're just gonna have to sit there and endure this. I could break somebody, but like, why Why would it break somebody with a second grave digger out? Yeah, no, no, real, no, re no real reason. Frankenstein got attacked! Oh, you get to choose who gets the, uh, the shield. Who gets the shield? Put up the shield in the grave digger, I, I think. There you go. And Frankenstein is free! He was released! Aha! A revenant. The, the revenant? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe don't attack the Draugr? Maybe put the grave digger in that spot? Yeah. Put grave digger there. All right. I think that you're already pretty set because you're going to do three points of damage this turn and then two points of damage next turn. You should be fine. Unless he does something weird. All this ice is taking up too much space. All of my skeletons are free now. No, you're still not stopping us. We're going to do two points of damage. And that's going to be the end, I feel. Yeah. Use the hammer. Uh, oh, you bashed the grave digger. Oh, your hammer broke. You used it too many times. Oh, what the? Mm, well, I guess Frankenstein is going to do three points of damage, and that'll be it, actually. Yeah. One, two, three. Well done. You got it. Yay! First try. Oh, come on, dude. I'm still cold. It's not my problem. Let's fight again soon. No. Please. Any left. For defeating one of my ghouls, I will reward you a starting bone in each of your battles. You'll no longer have to do that cheesy thing where you break a skeleton. Oh boy. The next area was made by one of my ghouls, Sawyer. He says it is terrible. Let's see if you can get through it. But first, a rare card, if you will. Mm, what do we got? Uh... The Necromancer, the Screaming Skull, or Dick Butt? Ah! <laughs> yes. Ah! <laughs> so they all have their advantages. He attacks in every adjacent space, including friendly adjacent spaces. Oh. Which could be an issue. This one redirects attacks. So if you tried, if, if the enemy tried to attack Dibuk here, it would instead want to attack one of his own adjacent spaces. So it's good for deflecting uh, attacks away from you. Okay. Um. And the Necromancer, which uh, is a decent card. The ability is not so amazing. When one of your creatures dies, it returns to life and dies again. What? <laughs> so, I mean, for example, if that bone heap died and came back to life and died again, you'd get a bunch of bones. You get oh, eight bones. Okay. So, like, there are abilities that still be useful. So, like, there, it, it would be a good combination with other cards, but I've never really found a great strategy for the Necromancer. Okay, take this guy. All right. I've never used him myself, but you could definitely see uh, some good effect from him, I would say. So here, welcome to the second map. Where am I? Oh, there I am. Yes. We're going to advance a bit, maybe grab a card before we fight the next round. The Banshee, the Grave Digger, or the Doll. Uh, what is the... A non brutal ally card, card bearing this sigil gains one power. Mm. Okay, interesting. So it gets stronger when all of your other cards... And, uh, yeah, Flying Banshee, essentially. Take a banshee. All right, well, I got a, got a banshee. I got a banshee. And then the first battle of the second map. Things might be getting a little more tricky, but hey, we start off with a bone token, so we okay. can play it. So yes. maybe the grave digger, since nothing is out in the field just yet. Well, I have an idea. What's that? So I do grave digger. Mm -hmm. yes. Skeleton. Okay. Wait. You can okay, I skeleton. have my hammer back. Yeah, you have your hammer back. Skeleton. Mm -hmm. Boop. And smash skeleton. If you want, sure. Boop. Or bone heap. Sure. Boop. Okay. And then, and turn, I guess. Sure. Oh, I should have put him somewhere else. What does he got? A, a centurion. centurion coming mm. down the line. Mm. Maybe, here's an idea. I would suggest breaking open bone heap with your hammer and then playing dick butt in front of the centurion. I don't think his name is dick butt. I'm going to call him dick butt. It's funny that way. You'll attack for zero, but he's going to try to attack you, but it's going to be redirected. Oh, is he not going to try to attack you? What's up with that? Hmm. He's like a skeleton. Okay. He has an ancient orb, or I guess she, has an ancient orb coming down the line. If you attack it, you're going to take a point of damage. Well, then that sounds like the perfect place. What skeleton? Uh, okay. Oh, shit. I should have waited. Well, he's going to, yeah. It doesn't matter. Whee! All right. Attack of one. There you go. Finally getting some damage on the board. Uh, okay. All right, now we draw a skeleton. 
now we place the skeleton here. Okay. So now, so now the skeleton will take that, and they'll just, they'll, they'll just. Well, the skeleton's gonna die after the first attack. Yeah, but then that gets rid of this. Well, he's got three points of health. Keep that in mind. Oh, I, I keep looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> Play Frankenstein on that third slot. You should be, you should be good still. Frankenstein will keep on doing two points of damage. All right, go. There you go, and you're gonna do nothing. Huh. Why aren't they doing anything? I don't know. Why aren't they doing anything? I guess you have negated the Centurion's attack, so I wouldn't be worried. Oh, well, they also don't- they also have zero attack. The Ancient Obols are purely defensive cards, so they're not gonna attack you. But you've got this. I mean, Frankenstein's gonna attack for lethal right now. There you go. Oh, oh, oh wait, they block flying. Yeah, that Whoop. doesn't matter too much, because oh, well. we are done. Yay, Frankenstein. Noise. I win! Okay, so that could have got a little better, but you know, we're still learning. It's the first try. So, new it. This isn't an enemy. This is a uh, special ability. Oh. Put a card in the grave. See what happens. Oh, it's Papyrus from Undertale. <laughs> yes. Hmm. It's going to become brittle, but also something bones. I think it loot. I would suggest the Plague Doctor, honestly. Alright. Oh, so now he's brittle. Marvelous! They came crawling back after you buried them! Oh, goodness! Poor Plague Doctor! They still care about you, it seems! Oh, that so, was mean. So, unfortunately, he has become brittle, but on the on the plus side, his bone cost to summon has been cut in half. Hmm. He, he no longer costs six bones to summon, so... It's not bad. Alright, so... What do we got? Poltergeist! So, we're gonna do... Bone Heap goes right here. Hmm, I would have considered the poltergeist's ability before you did that. Oh. It flies over the bone heap. <laughs> Play skeleton! Okay, yeah, that'll do. Go. Yeah. <laughs> One point of damage. Poltergeist also returns a point of damage. Okay. Draw a card. Hmm. Can't do much until you get Gravedigger on the field to get you a few more bones. You could also destroy the bone heap for the bones they're made of, since you're not gonna do it. Now I put him here. Okay. That wait, might... no, I put him here. Mm, okay. No, no, wait, wait, where do I put him? I don't know. D Dibuk doesn't actually do any damage themselves. You, I don't know if they're gonna redirect flying attacks either. So, maybe hold on to Dibuk for now. You could play Revenant, just do some damage. Now you are up by three. You'll go down once, you'll be up by two. And a vengeful spirit is coming at you. It does That's one what a revenant is. A revenant? A revenant is the same thing as a vengeful spirit. I guess technically, but in terms of playing cards, they're different, apparently. Well, they're not even playing cards. They're little tiles. I'm smart. Okay. <laughs> I, I, don't, I didn't follow. I don't, I don't know much about lore. We'll just keep on trading a point back and forth, back and forth for now. Oh, a few more enemies coming down the line, unfortunately. Hmm. Well, I guess you could use the Dybbuk to redirect. Oh, we gotta draw a card first. No. Well, you gotta. Can't really stop it from happening. No. You Let must, me play the card. You must, you Let me play, play the card and then draw a card. Uh, Let me play the card and then draw a card. I guess we're gonna What's have, the difference? We're gonna be here all What's day. What's the difference? Just draw What's the difference if I play a card and then draw a card? If you draw a card, you might find a better option to use your bones. Game Grave, sucks! Gravedigger! <laughs> you go right there. Okay, and the Gravedigger you can put probably on the left side too or something like that. Or absorb a few attacks, sure, if you want, whatever. Put him right there. Alright, go. Attack of zero. You attack directly for one. Oh, the Dybbuk did work this time. Yes, because the he attacked the Dybbuk, which directed it onto the Poltergeist. Yeah, it did work, nice. Hmm. Play zombie. That's a good idea, sure. Go. Do a point of damage. Yeah, we're not uh, overpowered this turn right now. We're gonna fly over the zombie, unfortunately. Ow, ow, ow. Mm-hmm. See? Dybbuk's doing good, doing work. Yeah, Dybbuk is actually killing all the cards, <laughs> killing more enemy cards than you are. All your cards are just got attack of zero. Unfortunately, <laughs> the Dybbuk is the strongest card on the field right now. Yeah. Uh, you could use a skeleton to destroy one of the vengeful spirits on the right side. Yes, I will do so. And go, Skeleton, go! You drew a Banshee? That's yep. the, the flying card. Yep. Yeah, we'll hold on to that for now, I suppose. Go! Bonk, bonk. Ah, we're gonna lose the zombie. Uh, who do you want to have protection? Maybe protect the Gravedigger, I would say. Yeah, that way they'll be able to absorb the attack from the Vengeful Spirit this turn. 
And who do you want to have waterborne? Uh, maybe not any, well... I uh, guess Gravedigger. You can put it on one of the Vengeful Spirit. Oh, put it on the Vengeful Spirit opposing Dybbuk. Wait, why? Because Dybbuk can't attack it anyway. There you go. Why can I put it on other... <laughs> Anyone on the field! Anyone on the field! Odd, but okay. Yes. Benji, go right here. Okay, you could. There you go. And Skeleton, go right here. Yeah, let's start dishing out some actual damage. Two points. And the Banshee's gonna get killed by the Vengeful Spirit, unfortunately. But then it gets killed. Yeah, thank you for that. Bouncing back and forth. Okay, we gotta do a little bit more damage. And there you go, you got a little bit more damage. Go. R round's over. Bit of a convoluted way to do it, but it got done. That's all that matters. I did it on a convoluted way. Whoop. Sorry. Sorry about that. I, I, sometimes yeah, I gotta stretch my leg to stand up a little bit. Next battle. And you have no, right. nothing coming in on the line right now, so... Play Banshee. Okay, yeah. I think. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Yeah, play Banshee. You'll do a point of damage, and the Grave Digger will be uh, absorbing a few hits from the Centurion for a while. Go! Ooh, get another Grave Digger on the field? Yeah, I could get another Grave Digger or the Bone Heap. Yeah, but nothing's going to be attacking the Bone Heap right now. All right, Grave Digger. Go! Go! Doing good, doing fine. Yeah, that Grave Digger's probably going to perish, but that's fine. Not much we can do right now. We only have two Bone Tokens. Yeah, we'll just... We'll just wait, I guess. Yeah, there goes the Banshee, unfortunately, but it had to be done. Uh, and there goes that Grave Digger. Mm-hmm. All right, Bone Heap. Nope. Draw a card first. Yep. There we go. There we go. Bone Heap, right here. Okay, absorb the attack from the incoming Centurion. Yep. And Zombie. Uh... Yeah, you can put him right there. It's not a bad idea. He only has one health. He does. So, I think we're going to put him right here. Okay, so he's going to attack the Ancient Obel and he's then gonna... die immediately? Oh, uh, he won't kill the Ancient Obel. No. That's right. I would put him in front of the Centurion to absorb right. the attack. We'll do that. And then... Maybe hold on to it for now. And turn. Centurion's going to hit the zombie, and then you can give somebody protection. So maybe the Gravedigger, and then give somebody else Waterborne. I don't know who you would want to give Waterborne to. Perhaps one of the Obels? Yeah. Doesn't really matter too much, I'd say. Yeah, this one. Yeah, sure. That way you, that way it can't attack you and you can fly over. There you go, yeah. Giving Waterborne to the Obel has made them completely ineffective. All right, so. Um... Nine tokens to use. You can play Frankenstein and Gravebard if you wanted to. Or the Revenant. I have an idea. We'll do Grave Bard mm -hmm. right here. Sure. And then Revenant right here. That's good, because the Revenant's so going to Now gonna he's going to do four damage. Four. And, I, yeah, I should win this turn. Yeah. Bonk, 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 bonk. You got it. The end well of that done. one. Well done, well done. Give me a treasure. A new card. What shall it be? Boop, boop, boop. The manana, -na but the banana gal. The manana, -na gal. I'm going to take another Revenant. Or the Dance Macabre, which attacks in random... Well, I wouldn't say random spots, but it alternates between attacking to the left and to the right. Mm. And it's erratic, difficult to control. Yep, Revenant. Revenant it is. So if you want to go to the Electric Chair, there's an optional battle there. Yeah, why not? Sure. Bone Heap, go right in front of the zombie. That's a good idea. And then... Grrr, can't do anything else. Oh, you could, you could have played oh, Skeleton. Oh, I, I should have played Skeleton. Oh, Shit. Well. well, there you go. All right, so now... Draw a card... Grave Digger, or Zombie opposite Zombie. Yeah, you'll kill his zombie with your zombie. Good, good. Grave Digger right here. Sure. And Skeleton right here. All right, we'll do a point of damage and destroy their zombie. Ooh. What the hell is that thing? Eee, a ripper. It's brittle, so it'll die after an attack, but what an attack. Wow, that does a lot of damage. You're, okay. You're definitely um, going to want to absorb that with a card if you can. Oh, your cards are brittle. You're, you're gonna have to do some damage now to uh, give yourself a buffer because he is going to attack for six points of damage. Why don't, I just, why don't I just wait and then put something in front of him? He's gonna come next turn and attack next turn. Yeah, that's what I mean. Why don't I just not put anything down this turn mm -hmm. and then next turn I'll put one of them down. If you want, sure. So they'll absorb the damage. Well, right now you're gonna do a point of attack from your zombie. Yeah. Which will put you up to plus two, I believe. Yeah. And then he's gonna do an attack of six, which will put you almost dead. But I really don't see any other options here. Wait. Oh, well, I'll just put one in front of him right now. You, Your cards are brittle. Your, every, every card you're holding is brittle, so they're going to die after they attack. He's going to attack for six points of damage, and I feel like it's inevitable at this point. You could try to put something in his in the spot 
that he's going to attack, but your card is going to attack and then break apart. You're going to attack for one, two, and then it breaks because it's brittle, and then Ripper attacks. Bonk for six. Ooh, 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 ooh. Not pleasant. Okay, great. Oh, the Banshee, thank God. Something that can absorb an attack. Something that's not brittle. Woo! All right, we're safe now. I guess. We're not going to die this turn. We're bouncing back. Ooh, the two Rippers are really strong, but we're good now. Give me a card. The Grave Bard. Can't play him yet. Not enough boons. All right, well, end turn, I guess. Do a point of damage. And then we'll lose the zombie, sadly. But you can give protection to the Grave Digger. And then, I don't know, maybe make the zombie waterborne if you wanted to. Yeah, we'll just do that, I guess. Sure. Try another card. Hmm. I think you have four bones, so you could play the Grave Bard right now. Play Grave Bard. Okay, it'll uh, attack for one, and the Grave Digger will now also attack for one. One, two. But then, ouch. Oh. Yes. Oh, you can play the Grave Digger there, absorb a few attacks. That's not bad. I get a few bones, yes. Go. And I believe you grab a skeleton. Oop, never mind. Oh. Well, you can, you can still play the Remnant this turn and finish him off anyway. It costs three bones, he'll do three points of damage. Yay! There we go. That battle's He's done. He's dead! He's, uh, she. She's dead. Grimora, I mean, it, it's creepy. It's dead. And then the uh, the chair here. You know, I've never actually used the crank to uh, increase the voltage. I've just I'll, I've always done level one voltage. I didn't even realize that was a thing, so. Well, here, let's do level three voltage on... Who, who is expendable, I would say? Grave Bard's four and keeps on getting killed. Banshees? Hmm. A lot of your cards are brittle. Maybe one of the Revenants? Yeah, we'll do one of the Revenants. And crank it up to max. Maybe if we're lucky, they'll get the unkillable sigil. Hmm, the hook. That's not bad. When this card dies, the creature in the opposing slot, if it survived being attacked for three points of damage, is dragged down to your side of the board. Neat. Cool. I think I'm good. Okay. I think that's fine. Sure. You pull the Revenant away. There you go. All right, pretty powerful card. Neat. There's a chest where you can grab one more card, or you can start the next battle. You gotta grab a card first. So you have an exploding pirate. Okay. A sarcophagus and the walkers. The sarcophagus gets stronger after a turn. I believe after one turn it becomes a 3-3 three, three card. Neat. So pretty powerful. The walkers cost four bones, but when they die they give you four bones, so that's not bad. Okay. And the exploding pirate, I believe, uh, after two turns, or you know, once once it's uh, it, it also has the anchored sigil, which comes into play for a, a boss battle later down the line. Oh boy. But the Exploding Pirate, once it dies, basically does a lethal damage to anything adjacent to it and opposing it. Hmm. Take that guy. Okay, we'll take the Exploding Pirate. I probably would have taken the Sarcophagus myself, but there's a lot of different strategies you can use with these cards. So you have a zombie. Got a zombie coming, so we'll just go ahead and do Bone Heap. To absorb the attack and maybe attack with a skeleton. There you go. Mm hmm. There goes the Bone Heap. And you have nothing? All right, I would grab a uh, basic skeleton to kill that zombie. There we go. Skeleton. And how many bone tokens do we have? Five? You can play Frankenstein now if you wanted to. Sure. There we Sounds go. Sounds good. And now you're up two, I believe. Yeah, you got it. Battle's already done. Oh, that ripper would be a problem, except uh, we're already going to strike for lethal, so no worries. Yeah, I don't think you have enough bones, so bonk. One, two. And we're done. I win. All right, time for the second boss battle. Oh, wait, there's there's one more optional thing you can do. I think you can go around. No, it's mandatory. You got to go to him. No, oh, never mind. If you wanted to, you can make another one of your cards brittle. If, if you can scroll up. With your, nah, uh, I don't want to make another card brittle. Okay. Yeah, you've got a lot of brittle cards as it is. That's kind of not working out so great for me. Yeah. Look away. Look away. If you want to fight, get it over quick. Why? Oh, you'll see. Yeah, so this is an interesting boss battle, I would say. You've got a pretty powerful card, yeah. I can't see what that is. It's Guardian. A gar it's a, uh, basically a, um, a bone hound. Okay. So it jumps in front of cards you play. You definitely want to absorb his attack, because it's going to do two points of damage. He's also got a zombie, it's going to do one. Well, skeleton. Sure. Bone heap. Yes. Uh, not much else you can do, so we'll attack for one, and then you'll attack for one, and the bone hound will kill the bone heap. Okay. You might want to draw a basic card to destroy his zombie. And with the leftover bone tokens you have, 
Either would be good. You uh, use... We'll use Death Touch on him. Yeah, insta-kill him with the Plague Doctor. Then he won't be a threat at all anymore. Goodbye, Bonehound. Goodbye, Zombie. Board's clear. Please, won't you spare some bones for a poor ghoul like me? Yoink. What? He took a bone token. How dare you? He's a jerk. Ooh, two remnants, huh? Yes, and one of them will pull the other card towards me. Ooh, okay. Yeah, we'll play the other one. Yeah, three points of damage. Zombie's going to attack for one point of damage. And you could use uh, maybe a basic zombie to take him out, since you don't have any bones anyway. Yeah, there we go. Take out the zombie. Just try and, uh... Yeah, it's kind of like a recovery phase right now. Maybe if you get a... Um, yeah, basic skeleton. Hmm. Well, we can do we can uh, do a point of damage here. I have an idea. Okay. Ooh! Stop taking my tokens! I think I know what your idea is. My idea, my idea is to steal him, yeah. but he keeps taking my dang tokens. Maybe yeah, that's a, that's a good strat. Yeah, maybe get one more turn with the skeleton. Yeah, it's, place the skeleton on an empty spot and do a point of damage. Yeah. I like that. You got a good idea here. Take a point of damage. It's fine. We'll take that. And, and then... draw. We can draw a regular one. Sure, if you want. Well, no, we'll draw a skeleton because we're probably going to need it. Play the Revenant. Yeah. Revenant goes there. I like that. Play the skeleton. Sure. So the Revenant is going to attack the Centurion, but the Centurion is going to take no damage because of that ability. But then you get the Centurion on your side. Yes. Now oh. I have a Centurion. That was a good idea. I like that. I didn't see that immediately, but yeah, good idea. Now you're gonna do two points of damage. Good. Mm hmm. I'm gonna take the bones. Stop stealing my damn bones. We got another centurion coming to oppose you, huh? Ooh, a grave digger. Great. Put the grave digger down. And attack of one, which is enough to end the first round. Yay! Oh, I probably shouldn't have put the grave digger. Down. Oh no, he has arrived. He is thirsty for your bones. Oh no, it's a hellhound. It's a hellhound. Does an attack of three and jumps into every spot to absorb all the attacks. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and play the Banshee, I think. It's not a bad idea. Okay, so we're gonna do two points of damage here. Oh, well, I say that, but the hellhound is gonna jump in front of your cards. And bonk, kills your Banshee. Hmm. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, you placed a skeleton there. Mm -hmm. The Centurion is going to do one point of damage, and the skeleton is going to attack the Hellhound, and, and then, then break the park. Okay, this is good so far. I like it. Hellhound has five points of health. Ooh, and... Yikes. Yeah. And he's going to play the... Oh, four points of damage. Oof. Yeah, it's a little rough. Yeah, so this boss battle is a little tricky, unfortunately. Yeah, and he still has five points of health, so I'm probably losing this fight. I wouldn't play the skeleton. I would not play the skeleton. I would just I would just take the yell on that battle here. Pull it, we'll pull the string. Centurion will do a point of damage. Hellhound will kill your Centurion. The Hellhound's strength yeah. keeps getting stronger. It's variable. Like its attack power keeps changing. Now it's an attack at six. I'm gonna put Gravedigger in front of the Hellhound. Okay, good idea, I think. So they can just tank some damage. Yeah. And then... I would hold on to that for now. Yeah. I'm gonna lose the Grave Diggers. I'm gonna take your bones. Stop taking my frickin' bones! Real jerk about it. Okay. Let's see if we get a strong card. Come on, big money. The zombie, unfortunate. Not the card we needed. Yeah, we might uh, not be able to win this one. Yeah, I don't think I can win this. I guess just do that. Yeah. And... Do this. Mm -hmm. it's, it, at this point, it's basically just prolong. Yeah, I'm dead. So yeah. And I lost. You lost that boss battle, but hey, I mean, first attempt, you made it to the second boss, and because we have that uh, special. Oh, I can't be killed. Yeah, you, you can't be killed. So if you want, you can try the boss battle the second time. Yay! Yes, the second time. You know, we're gonna take some. Uh, we're, we're gonna reflect on what happened, and we're gonna improve this time. I'd say. All right, let's see. Bonk, bonk. All right, first wave is done. So all your centurions, wipe them off the board, please. Thank you. Oh, no, it's he's thirsty for your bones. It's the hellhound. So whenever he takes my bones, he gets more powerful. Is that what's happening? Uh, basically, his the, the, the ability for the hellhound is his strength is tied to the amount, of, the amount of bones you currently have. 
Oh boy. Yeah, that's his special ability. It took me a while to figure that out. But yeah, the Hellhound gets stronger for all the bones you have. So he normally has one, but it's buffed by two because I have two bones. Yes. Okay. He'll probably kill your Centurion. Kills the Centurion, which means... Uh, we'll take another... Yeah, grab a, a strong card. Yeah, there you go. Um, you could use the Dybbuk. Yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. If he attacks right. an adjacent card... We'll use the Dybbuk. Yeah, this is gonna and, work well, I think. And turn. Yeah, fly over the the kennel and attack for a point of damage. You're going to attack Dybbuk, but you can't. You can't, because he redirects your attack. You've nullified that terrible card. And that could come in useful later if he does man manage to destroy Dybbuk. Uh, geez, I mean, just keep on pulling the string because we're gonna keep on doing one point of damage, and he can't do jack about it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and take the bones. Doesn't matter. Wow, so I accidentally... Yeah, you may, you may have found an easy way to get around this tough battle. Banshee keeps on doing one point of damage over and over and over again. And I'm not playing anything, so he's not moving. Yeah? You have a skeleton. You're going to attack the Gravedigger. Oh, no. Gravedigger still... Ah! Ah! Killed his own dude. Yes. Doesn't matter, though. Fight's over. Banshee wins. I win! Yeah, second attempt. Not bad. Oh, yeah. Thanks for getting it over with. And don't ever return! I'll do my best. The next area won't be so easy. I asked Royal to do his best at making it impossible. Neat. And of course, you get one more rare card as a reward for not dying. Well, you did die, but you eventually figured it out. I got it. I got it the second time. What do we got? Headless, Headless horseman. horseman. That is expensive. The Hydra. Hydra. And a Necromancer. Okay, so we've already seen Necromancer. Hydra is trifurcated strike and unkillable. It's pretty good, I would say. Yeah. I've tried the Headless Horseman in a deck before, but that 13 bone cost. That's too high. It is pretty pricey. Take that. We'll take we'll take the Hydra. Yeah. Look, barrels. So now we're on the third map, and I will let you know that there are a total of four four maps here, four bosses. So we're halfway through it. So if you want, you can talk to that guy with the scythe over on the left side. Alright. Or we can do that next time. Oh, we'll do it next time.